opportunity to participate in a walk that benefits children with a seldom heard of disease uh, called apraxia. It's a condition, I'm sorry. I met with the organizer and mama bear of the event to find out more. I think that had Ryder been born maybe 10 years before he was, they probably would have absolutely said he had autism. But Ryder was so engaged. He could point to every color, every body part, every letter, every everything, but he could not say one single sound of it. And she said, I am almost 100% certain your child has something called apraxia. Michelle Lay and her family learned of this condition when her son Ryder was 15 months old. Apraxia is not a well-known condition. She found a way to explain it to people in simple terms. I relate apraxia to when an adult has a stroke and they lose the ability to speak. When a child has apraxia, it is very much so the same thing, except for they're born with it. She explains how they first noticed there was a problem. His first word when he was about 10 months old was cat, and then he lost it. It went to, he could mimic like the sound of a cat, so he would meow. And we kind of thought it was cute at first, but then we realized like cat was gone and cat wasn't coming back. And he couldn't say cat again until after he had received hundreds of hours of speech therapy. When he was probably 15 months old, we started noticing that he really wasn't making the verbal gains that he should. At its root, it's a motor planning disorder. So when you really think about everything that we all do day in and day out that has to do with tying your shoes, which button do you button first? Trying to brush your hair. You know, we all plan those things out without even thinking about it. So for him, things like reading, when you have to remember, well, what did I just read? It's tricky. Michelle has a private Facebook page with 150 Jacksonville families dealing with apraxia to offer a localized perspective. But Kasana is a national organization that has been her saving grace. Money raised from the walk goes to them, which helps kids and their families in a number of ways. They uh, provide iPads for children that are nonverbal or learning to speak so that they can communicate. Um, they provide speech therapy grants because insurance does not cover speech therapy for children with apraxia in multiple states, Florida being at the top of that list. Um, they do continuing education for parents, for speech pathologists, and into like hospitals, school districts, things like that where they can really try to get into the community and help. After raising almost $80,000 from the past two walks, Michelle has a goal of $60,000 for this year's event. There's a lot of action going down. For the walk, um, I like to call it more of a family fun day. Some people walk, some people don't walk. Um, it's four laps around the track at Bowles um, on San Jose. But really, it's a day for parents to get to know each other and have an opportunity to meet one another. It's a day for the kids to be able to just be kids and play and hang out. We have stormtroopers, princesses, Spider-Man will be there. Most of all the mascots here locally are coming out. Um, we will have the cheerleaders from the Jacksonville Sharks. Hopefully the Roar cheerleaders are showing up as well. We have games from Jack's Play Day who are providing us with giant Jenga games. And we've got a DJ. Um, who's fantastic and has such a great time with the crowd. And then my gym comes out and they play games with the kids and it's really involved. There's absolutely something for everyone to do of every age group. Michelle wants to stress? Anybody can come. It's open to the public and I prefer that the public come because to me, I always say to people, if I'm only speaking to families about apraxia that have apraxia, I didn't really make much of a difference. I need to be getting to the community on a personal level. I'm Rance Adams for River City Live. So such an amazing family and writer. Isn't, he's the cutest, those curls and all that yes. stuff. So he's made great strides with his therapy and all of that. So the walk is tomorrow at the Bowles School. You can still register.
now online, but you can also register tomorrow at 8.30 for check-in. It begin, The walk begins at 10 in an effort to connect and share more information about Apraxia. Michelle has created a website blog called Apraxia Mama Bear that details her family's experience with the condition. Yeah. So. Tomorrow's gonna be beautiful out, so a great mm -hmm. opportunity yeah. to do that. And the Bulls School, the campus is gorgeous. And so. I just learned a lot. I didn't know about that condition. Yeah, no a idea. lot of people didn't. So if you want to know more, go to RiverCityLiveTV.com and click on the As Seen on RCL tab. All right, stick around.